Yo, what's going on you guys? My name is Owen and welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are all doing well. So for today's video, I'm doing the long anticipated 2021 shoe collection video. I do a shoe collection video every year um, because it's a lot of fun and I get to look back and see how my style and my preferences have changed and all that. I'm really excited to do this video for you guys. Um, there's a lot of shoes to get through, so it'll be a lot of fun. You guys will be able to see exactly what my shoe rotation is looking like. I have exactly 20 pairs of shoes to show you guys, um, which is way too many shoes. Nobody needs 20 pairs, but um, yeah, I think shoes are probably the one thing that I don't really condense my wardrobe on or don't try to control the quantity of shoes I have, whereas the rest of the wardrobe um, has slimmed down over the years. For some reason, my shoe collection has not. But anyways, real quick, I wanna shout out the lovely people over at Karma, formerly known as Shop Tagger, for sponsoring this video. You guys know that I only do sponsored videos with brands or products that I actually use and believe in. Um, and I've used Karma or Shop Tagger in the past, I've done sponsored content with them in the past. Um, quite a few of the shoes in this video I actually got using Karma um, because some of the shoes were at full price, and so I added it to my Karma list and then as the price drops or if something goes on sale or if a coupon code becomes available, they will let me know, I'll get a notification. Um, and it's super helpful, helps me get great deals, helps me save a little bit of money. If you don't know what Karma is, it's a free app and a Google Chrome extension. Um, it's totally free, you just add it to your Chrome or just download it to your phone and then you start saving items that you want, sort of like a wish list, and Karma will notify you as items drop in price, so it helps you save money, super useful. Um, like I mentioned, a few of the shoes in this video I actually got using Karma. And yeah, it's a fantastic service. I highly recommend using it. If you don't already have Karma installed, just stick around for a minute because I'm gonna do a quick run through on how to download and start using it for yourself and how to use all their little features. Um, so yeah, let's hop into that right now. To download and start using Karma for yourself, just go to the first link in the video description and that'll take you to the Karma website where you're able to sign up and download the Google Chrome extension. It's a free extension, so you just click the Add to Chrome button and it'll automatically load it up for you. And then you can go ahead and create an account. I'm just gonna go ahead and sign in and then you can start shopping on all your favorite stores. Um, right here, I found a couple items on Essence and you just click the little Karma button on the right hand side of the page. You can choose when you wanna be notified if it's a specific price change or any price change. And then you can also start adding it to a list if you wanna keep yourself nice and organized. I'm currently working on my fall winter list um, because some items are seasonal. And it's really cool because when an item does go on sale or any sort of price change happens, you'll get a notification in your email or on the mobile app if you have that installed, which I recommend doing. Um, this is the fall winter list I'm working on right now, so please don't snipe any of these items from me. And then another cool feature that Karma has is their coupon code scanner. So when you're checking out, it'll automatically scan the internet for coupon codes and try to save you as much money as possible. Saves all the hassle of trying to go ahead and search for yourself and try to find coupon codes. It'll just automatically scan it for you. Um, on this order right here, it found a code that worked and saved me a couple hundred dollars, which is kind of insane. Um, so it's completely free, just saves you money, so why not? And sometimes you'll get some cash back as well on your order. So it's all in all a great, great service and I highly recommend checking it out. If you go to the first link in the description down below, that's my affiliate link. Um, it'll take you right to the Google Chrome store. Like I said, it's a free extension, so there's no reason not to use it. it just helps you save money, helps you find coupons, sends alerts to your phone and whatnot. And with all that out of the way, I say we hop into the collection. I don't really know what I'm gonna start with. I'll probably just grab a pair of shoes and start talking about it. I'm gonna try to run through everything pretty quickly. I'm gonna give as much info as I can in a short amount of time. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Drop a like down below, share with a friend, subscribe to the channel if you are new, it helps me out so much. And also let me know down in the comments what you guys wanna see in a future video. And also if you have any questions about any of these items, I'd be happy to help you. So hopping to the first shoe, I guess I'll just start off with these. Um, I'm only gonna hold one since there's no point in holding both. These are the Carol Christian Poel Moto Buckle Boots. Um, these are from 2006 and they're insanely rare. I've only seen a few pairs pop up online for sale. And I got these from my friend Luke who runs a store called Ev Eternity over in London. It's a very well curated archive designer store and they have some vintage here and there. A really great selection. I picked these up from him. Like I mentioned, there's only a couple pairs I've ever seen in existence and um, this is the only other black pair that I've seen so I had to cop it. Got a great deal as well. Just to run over some of the details, instead of a traditional lace or a zipper, 
These have these really cool buckles that come across the front and they kind of unlatch like that. And then that's how you get into the boot. It's sort of like a trifold tongue construction. So the tongue isn't a separate piece. It's actually stitched to the rest of the boot, like sort of like the shaft of the boot. Um, and then it just folds together and yeah, that's how you buckle it. It has different levels of tightness for the buckles, but I just always keep it on the first level or whatever. Um, the leather is Cordovan leather, so it's really thick, very strong leather, um, extremely durable. It's nice and shiny, has a beautiful shine to it. Um, it's got this double capped toe up in the front, um, nice pointed toe as well. It's got a little bit of a heel. It's like the perfect balance between like a formal boot and something a little bit more edgy, I guess. Um, and yeah, these will never leave my collection for sure because I know if they do, I will never see another pair. Yeah, starting off with one of my favorites, I think this is a great boot. I guess I'll get the other CCP boot out of the way. These right here are the CCP Tarnished Tornado Boots, also from 2006. And these are definitely one of the more unique pairs of boots I own. Nothing else like it out there. When I picked these up from Silver League, you guys know Silver League, one of the best curated archive designer stores out there. And the cool thing about these boots is the enamel tarnishing. The Tornado boot is a pretty standard, iconic silhouette for Caro Christian Poel. Um, but the cool thing about it is the treatment on this particular pair. As you can tell from the toe and the heel, it used to have this enamel coating that actually went around the entirety of the boot. And then I guess over time, it's just worn down and all that's left is the toe and heel area on both shoes. So it kind of has like this hint of like a amberish brown. Um, it looks so beautiful. And then the rest of the boot is sort of like a really dark brown slash black, but it's sort of worn down and a lot of the paint or a lot of the leather sort of chipped off, kind of revealing the suede um, under layer. And the suede underlayer is sort of like a green, so it's got a lot of different colors going on. It's a beautiful pair of boots, nice pointed toe, and the leather has folded so beautifully over time. Um, they fit me great, it's sort of like perfectly molded to my foot. Um, the cool thing about the Tornado boot is that it has a double-sided zipper that comes from the back of the boot all the way to the inside of the foot. And because it is a older CCP model, uh, this particular one has the YKK zips, whereas now they have like their own CCP branded zippers. Um, it's got beautiful construction. It's a really nice looking boot. I have another pair of Tornadoes coming in that I wish came in for this video, but I'll just save it for a future pickups video. This is another pair that will never leave my wardrobe. Had so many offers, but I can't get rid of them. They're too cool. Next, I say we get into some hiking boots. I have a few pairs of hiking boots to show you guys. This first pair right here sent over to me by the man Reese Cooper. Um, this is the Reese Cooper Wilson boot. I believe he released this last year but he recently came out with a black nylon version. This particular one is the tan suede. Um, beautiful construction, very well made. I think it was made in Italy. Um, it's got this very nice Vibram sole on the bottom right there. And then it's got your traditional hiking boot eyelet situation, except um, it's got these extra eyelets on sort of like the heel of both shoes. So you can kind of do different lacing uh, combinations, get a little creative with it. Um, I have one of the recommended lacing combinations on there. And I swapped out the laces for the tan ones. I just feel like it looks more monochromatic. Looks really clean. Yeah, it's a super comfortable boot. Um, I haven't actually worn these too much. I've only worn them a couple times. Um, and I'm looking forward to wearing them more often. This is one of the only pairs of shoes in this video that I haven't worn too much. Um, but I'm looking forward to wearing it more. And uh, yeah, that's it for the Wilson boot. And then next up for another hiking boot, I talked about this in one of my recent videos. These are the Hoka 10-9 Gore-Tex hiking boots. Um, I believe these released this year, and I have the black colorway right here. This is a really interesting silhouette for a hiking boot um, because of the extended heel or the extended sole that goes way past the back of the shoe. Um, it creates this really chunky look to it, um, but it is a really lightweight shoe, so it doesn't feel heavy at all when you walk. It's not uncomfortable or anything. Um, this extended heel actually makes the walking motion way smoother. It's hard to describe, you just kind of have to try it out for yourself. Um, because it's Gore-Tex, it's completely waterproof, and Hoka is one of the best hiking boot brands out there. I highly recommend grabbing a pair. Um, I've had a couple over the years, but um, I'm down to this one right now. Um, I think the construction, the paneling is beautiful on them. It's got like this futuristic look to it. Um, this particular one is the black colorway, obviously, but I think they do have a white colorway as well. 
Um, and even though this is like a size, it's either like a size nine and a half or 10, it looks like a 13 just because of that massive heel. Um, yeah, I've put a, quite a bit of wear into these. I think they're a beautiful shoe. Um, so yeah, that's it for the Hoka 10-9 Gore-Texes. And last up for the hiking boots, we've got a classic, the Alix suede hiking boots. If you guys have been a long time viewer of the channel, you know I've had so many pairs of Alix hiking boots. I guess more specifically the ROA collabs, but this is not an ROA collab. Um, this is just mainline Alix, but it does have that same Vibram sole that a lot of the collabs have. Um, it's such a cool silhouette. I think the paneling is so beautiful on this. It's really simple. It's really modern. It's kind of like futuristic. Uh, I think the brown color is so nice. The actual quality of the suede is really nice as well. And it's got like this cool eyelet structure going on. Um, I recently had this pair cleaned because they were just caked in mud and dirt and they looked awful because um, I actually wear these so much. I have my eye on a couple other Leaks boots, um, but I'm down to this pair right now. So yeah, let's move on to the next one. Next up, I'll do some Birkenstocks. I currently have two pairs with me. I do have a third pair, but I lent it to a friend and I haven't asked for it back. Um, but anyways, this pair right here is like my go-to. Wear these so frequently. These are the Birkenstock Bostons in this beautiful Nubuck leather. This particular version is a little over double the price of a regular Birkenstock Boston because of the leather quality. And I think it's totally worth it. I really love the quality on these. And I also got these in the narrow variation too. I feel like that was like the one downside of the Birkenstock Boston was how bulbous and around the toe is. But once you get it in the narrow, it looks so much cleaner. I highly recommend it. I think these are really great because you can wear them out and about or around the house and they look really smart or really casual depending on how you style them. So yeah, these are one of my favorites in my wardrobe right now. I'll probably say that a lot because I have a lot of favorites. The other Birkenstock that I have um, is one that I actually haven't worn too much, but I used it for the lookbook styling for my first release for my brand, Somar. Um, this is the Birkenstock A630. Uh, there is an A640, which has a steel toe, I believe, which is so strange for a rubber shoe. Um, but this is sort of like almost a cheaper alternative to the Bottega Veneta puddle boots. I actually kind of prefer these over the puddle boots. And I noticed after I did that lookbook, a lot of stores started styling like mannequins and whatnot with these shoes. I don't know if I had any sort of impact on that, um, but I feel like these kind of blew up out of nowhere even though they have been out for a while. Um, it's a super cool silhouette. Uh, it's very cheap too, especially compared to the puddle boots. Um, they're sort of like a low cut rain boot, I guess. And there's a couple other colorways. And this one obviously is the black colorway, but there is sort of like an off-white bone colorway that I think looks really clean too. And by the way, with Birkenstocks, I always recommend sizing down um, for some reason they just fit big, so I always get like a 42 even though I'm a true 43. But yeah, that's it for Birkenstocks. I say we do some Gweedies since I have a lot of pairs of Gweedies to run through. So this first pair of Gweedies are called the 788Zs. Um, this is one of the more unique uh, Gweedy boots I own because of the color and also just the silhouette of the boot. This is a very, very high silhouette. Um, it's got the back zip right there, the classic Gweedy back zip. And then also the color is really cool too. It's like a sort of like a maroon brownish tone. Um, and the leather is really interesting as well. I've asked you guys before what you think it is. People were saying it's either horse, a shrunken bison leather or some ostrich leather. Um, I can't really tell. I would have figured it was ostrich because of the uh, like polka dotty pattern to it, but it doesn't poke out the same way that ostrich leather normally does. So I can't really tell, um, but it's a beautiful shoe. Um, it's got the tallest heel, I think, out of my entire collection. I do have a Vibram sole attached on the bottom, which I highly recommend doing on most boots that you own if they have like a leathered bottom. It's a good idea to throw an extra rubber sole on the bottom. It extends the lifetime of your shoes by so much. I think back zips are some of the best Guidi models because it allows the leather to fold in like a really interesting way on the front. I think just the texture of that and how the light catches all the folds looks so beautiful. Um, it's pretty comfortable as well. I know a lot of people say that back zips aren't that comfortable and that the back zip breaks, but I've never had any issues with mine. Um, I've got one other pair of back zips to show you guys, but yeah, those are the 788Zs. Let's move on to the next one. So next up we have the Greedy 995s. Um, this is definitely one of the more formal looking boots I own. It's pretty plain Jane, but I think they're really beautiful if you look at some of the details. Um, this particular leather is reverse Cordovan leather, which is, I think, the best leather that you can get for Gweedies. It's just my personal favorite. I really like how the light catches it. This particular model is like a high top. 
It's got some leather cut laces that wrap around the top of the boot a few times, a nice subtle heel, some contrast stitching, uh, a nice round toe. I think these can be really versatile to how you style them. I could totally see somebody wearing these to a super formal event um, or just dress them down and wear them really casually. Uh, I tend to do the more casual approach, but yeah. Next up we have easily my most worn pair of boots. These are the Greedy 795Bs. Um, it's a really sick combat boot silhouette. Um, it's got the chunky Vibram sole on the bottom, hence the V in 795V. The leather on this pair is full horse grain, um, so it's nice and shiny. It's got a buttery feel to it. Uh, it's got the same leather cut laces as the 995s, and they also do wrap around a few times. Um, but yeah, I think these are a great like elevated combat boot. If you have some cash to splash, um, I think these are a good investment. They've got some nice contrast stitching, but the stitching on my pair is kind of um, almost faded into a tonal effect because of how much I wear them. Yeah, I won't talk about these too much just because I talk about them a lot. So on to the next pair. These right here are the 796 V's and I picked these up also from Silver League. I got these for a great deal. Um, I believe at the beginning of last year as well. And the particular leather on this pair is reverse baby bison leather. Um, so on the exterior, you've got that suede. And then on the inside of the boot, you have that more traditional leather texture right there. Um, and it is a back zip, so it's got that nice chunky greedy zipper, but it is a lot shorter than that red pair. Um, and you can see it's some nice folding action going on in the front. Super comfortable. I've been wearing them a lot recently. I love a chunky lug sole. I think it just looks great on a lot of boots. Not too much to say about these, so we'll move on to the next pair. Next up, we have another pair of beaters for me. These are the Greedy 210s. Um, this is the front zip version. There's a couple different front zip silhouettes that Greedy offers. I forget if it's either the PL1 or the PL2. Um, I can't remember exactly what the difference is between those. Um, this is my favorite front zip. I think it looks really clean and minimal. It's got that formal sort of military look to it. Um, it's got that same greedy zipper, but just on the front. And the toe cap kind of like wraps around most of the shoe, which I think is a really cool touch. The actual heel is really subtle. It's not much of a heel. Um, so it looks really clean and sleek. And you might be able to see it does have a tongue right there and the tongue is actually stitched to one side of the front zip. Um, I've worn these so much, you guys can see that the toe is creased up a lot. And on the bottom, I do have the fish scale sole that a lot of Guidis will come with uh, if you buy them new. And the leather on this one is also full horse grain. So same as the 795Vs. And yeah, beautiful pair of boots. I've worn these so much. Next up, I have a pair of the Lorenzo boots from the brand called From The First. They're a great shoemaker. I highly recommend checking them out if you haven't already. Um, I believe they're doing a collab with Sanjeev that's coming out maybe like later this year, early next year. Um, but this is sort of like a cheaper alternative to the Dior Navigates with like a few subtle differences here and there. I've never owned the Navigates, but I'm pretty sure that these are more of a chunkier silhouette. I can't remember exactly which leather this is. Um, they do offer it in a few different colors and uh, different leather textures. But yeah, this is the one, this is the one that I opted for. Um, it's got a black crepe sole right there, which looks really cool. I haven't actually, I haven't actually worn these too much. I'm still in the break-in process. Um, I haven't worn them in probably like nine months, but yeah, they're a really cool boot nonetheless, and I'm looking forward to wearing them more. I just have so many shoes, it's hard to give love to each one of them. I highly recommend checking out from the first. Um, they're great quality, and they're pretty affordable too in the grand scheme of things. Next up, we have a pair of shoes a lot of people have asked me about. Um, these are the Our Legacy Army Derbies, which I think came out earlier this year, not in their most recent collection, but possibly the collection before that. Um, and uh, they released them in two different versions. I got this version, the unpebbled leather one. Um, and yeah, ever since I posted like my first photo wearing these, everybody was asking me what they were. It's a really great derby, um, classic derby silhouette, but really great shape overall, and the details are all there. Um, these did take a long time to break in. It's a really stiff leather. My ankles were messed up um, trying to break these in. Uh, yeah, it's just a tough break in process. And also the original laces did break on mine. Um, so I replaced them with some greedy laces that I then cut to size because greedy laces are so long. Um, I've had, would have had to like wrap around the whole shoe a couple times. Really clean silhouette. This is something that I'd wear to more formal occasions and whatnot. Um, that's what the bottom looks like. More traditional leather sole. I should probably get a uh, rubber sole thrown on these though. But yeah, it's always good to have a smarter shoe in your wardrobe. Never know when you might need to go to a more formal event, like a wedding or whatnot. Um, so yeah, these are a great investment. Next up, we'll do this pair right here. These are a pair of Yucatan Main Oxguide boots. 
Um, I've had a couple pair of Yucatans in the past and these are by far my favorite. Yucatan is a Japanese brand, but these boots are handmade in Maine. They're all hand stitched together. Beautiful craftsmanship. It's got a really nice moccasin toe. Um, you can see the individual like stitch lines and how the leather's all cut in sort of like a zigzag pattern. Um, it's got a nice lug sole on the bottom right there. The leather on this one is a Nubuck leather. And yeah, even though Yucatan is sort of a pricey brand, I think they're totally worth it because the craftsmanship is there. Um, handmade with love, so why not support them? Uh, it's got some leather cut laces, really thick leather cut laces. Compared to like the Guidis, they're a lot thinner. Um, these are great. Even though there was a little bit of a break-in period, um, they're nice and buttery now, it's super comfortable. I think overall, Yucatan doesn't get enough love. Um, I think they're a really cool brand. I'll do these next two together since they're the same shoe, just different colorways. These are the Jacob Hetzer 1981 loafers. I've got the black leather ones and also the gray suede ones. These were some of my most worn shoes, maybe like last year and the year before. Um, but since I've had them for so long, I haven't really worn them too much recently. These are both completely beat. You guys can see how messed up the leather is on these. Um, if I had to pick between the two, I'd probably lean more towards the gray suede. So next up we have my go-to gym shoes, my running shoes, my dog walking shoes. These are the New Balance 990 V4s. Uh, and you guys can tell how cooked these are. The discoloration on these is insane. Um, but I have them in that classic gray colorway. I probably should replace these sort of soon. There's some really cool collabs out there. Um, some better colorways than this colorway in my personal opinion. So these might get replaced sort of soon. Um, but yeah, super comfortable. Pretty much the only sneakers I own right now. I used to be a sneaker guy, but now I wear boots every day pretty much. But you still need a pair of sneakers in your wardrobe, so I'm down to these. Um, but they're totally cooked though. And then last but not least, we have one of my favorites in my collection. Um, pretty iconic for my channel, I think. Uh, these are my vintage US military 1965 army boots. These are definitely one of the most worn shoes in my collection. Originally these did have a flat sole on the bottom, but that sole is cooked and so I replaced it. Uh, with this Vibram uh, Montagna sole. None of the cobblers in my area had the Montagna sole in stock, so I did the Vibram concierge service where you send it to Vibram, tell them the sole that you want, and then they'll replace it for you. They also polished and cleaned the leather for me as well, which is a really nice touch. On my pair, the leather is cracking, it's looking beautiful. You can start to see some of the brown tones peek from underneath. These are really comfortable, but vintage uh, combat boots are pretty hit or miss. The sizing is weird. Um, some pairs are really stiff, some pairs just have no structure at all because they've been worn so much. Um, I looked out and I found a great pair that's lasted me a long time so far. They do have the leather cut laces, the nice thick ones, and they're like the main inspiration for my upcoming combat boot that I'm gonna be releasing. A lot of you guys have asked me what is my recommendation for the best like affordable combat boot. And usually I'll say these, except it's so hit or miss that I almost don't recommend buying it, um, which is why I'm setting out to create my own, um, sort of like the perfect harmony between all my favorite boots. And I think we're getting really close. And that, I believe, wraps it up for the collection. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like, share the video with a friend, subscribe to the channel if you are new. And once again, I wanna give a huge thank you to the people over at Karma for sponsoring the video. Once again, link down in the description below. Use my affiliate link to download the Chrome extension. Let me know what you guys wanna see in some future content. Be happy to do whatever you guys want. Hope you have a great rest of your day. See you guys next time.